John Ruffle, Coffee Time Talks for Thursday, the 22nd of October, 2020. It's been a hard talk to make today because um, I feel I need to respond to some of the comments that Pope Francis is claimed to have made in a film that's been uh, released this week in America. And I want to, first of all, I've been getting inbox comments and so forth from Facebook, people wondering what's going on and saying, John, you know. And first of all, I want to say that the Catholic Church as an institution, frankly, has lost its right to pontificate about human sexuality, uh, certainly until it really sorts out and cleans its own uh, closet out regarding uh, the abuse of uh, children and adults by clerics in the Catholic Church. All the cover up that's taken place within the Roman Catholic Church, even as we understand it um, at times, cover up that's going straight up as far as the Vatican itself. And if you think I'm being hard on Catholics, I am a Catholic myself, and I adhere to the teaching of the Church as it has been handed down through the centuries by the apostles. Um, and just one point here, it would be really good if uh, Pope Francis would come out and just say, hey, you know what, we're going to allow Catholic priests to be married, or Roman Catholic priests to be married. Eastern Orthodox, those that are even within the communion um, under the see of Rome, they are allowed, in fact, encouraged to be married and to have families. So this is not a moral teaching about married priests. It's simply something that is part, that's been handed down via tradition, but is not a moral imperative that priests should be single. We're all called to be chaste, whether we are married, single, whatever, we are to have chaste or holy relationships. And so now that goes to the heart of what we're talking about with the homosexual issue. And I want to say first and foremost, before I go into the Vatican document itself and explore it with you, I want to say that I am not against homosexual people. I am not homophobic. I reject that. I have homosexual friends. I've got a friend who has come out of homosexual lifestyle, doing great. And I have people who are active homosexuals that I know and commune with and have fellowship with. And so what I'm saying is that we need to separate these issues out and we need to avoid knee-jerk reactions. When I put onto my own private prayer group earlier on, I think yesterday night when I've got this news broke, I put on there a link and I said, please no knee-jerk reactions. Of course, the first thing I got was a knee-jerk reaction from a friend over in America because we need to explore the issue of sexuality and not just pontificate ourselves. I don't need to pontificate. The scripture says thus and thus. We need to, first and foremost, have the welfare of the individual in our heart and mind and do all things in love, mercy, and compassion. That is foundational. The other foundational thing is that we do need to um, uh, hold to truth, but there is in that aspect of love, compassion, listening to the story of others. The church has got a difficult job because the Pope seems to think he's a world leader, and uh, he's not. He's a church leader. And so his role is the shepherd of the flock, is not to pontificate about political uh, goings on in the world as if we were our own mini nation. We've been called out of this world to be the people of God. And one of the mistakes the Pope continually makes is in calling everybody children of God, he's correct because we all are part of God's creation and potentially we all have a relationship with God, but not everybody has indeed accepted that personal relationship that actually brings them back like the prodigal, back into relationship with God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. And this is a massive, massive distinction we dare not overlook. 
And I feel that there, um, without casting judgment, I feel there are many prodigals in the Catholic Church around the world who have yet to come back to allow themselves to be embraced by the love of Christ. They're still trying to be religious, trying to do the things. Culturally Catholic, I call it. Being culturally Catholic, but not allowing the baggage to fall off and say, Lord Jesus, I'm fully yours. I belong to you. Here I am. Spirit, soul, and body to do your will. And this is the problem. Pope Francis is overseeing a church where we have so many prodigals. And at the parish level, our role is to love people, whether they're sitting on the church pew, watching via YouTube that like you are right now, or completely out of the church in bars and strip joints and so forth, um, and bring them to the love of Christ, a conversion of heart. Not a conversion to ecological justice, by the way, but an inner conversion, a change of heart, because that inner heart, once we are changed on the inside, we can have impact on those around us. First, starting with our nuclear families, working outward into the communities and into the wider world. This is what we need, is genuine conversion of heart to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Nothing else can cut mustard. I've run out of time, and I was actually going to share with you the document from the Vatican. This is consideration regarding proposals to give legal recognition to unions between homosexual persons. And it was written by Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, who became, of course, uh, Pope Benedict XVI, and it was signed off by Pope John Paul II in March the 28th, 2003. And so St. John Paul II authorized this document and it speaks of church tradition regarding sexuality. And if you want to know what it says, come back tomorrow and I will share more on it. We're out of time today. So this is John Ruffle for Coffee Time Talks. Thanks so much for watching. Please. It's down here, isn't it? Subscribe to the channel and watch what we're doing and tell others what we have here because I believe this will be an encouragement to you and to your friends during this difficult period of COVID-19. Thanks for watching. God bless you.